In this tutorial, we'll take a look at graph trends within the category of polynomial relationships. Now, polynomial relationships are often categorized by their degree. So let's take a look at some example polynomials with various degrees and learn about some patterns. And these patterns and trends will help us understand and make predictions around polynomial relationships and their graphs. The most basic polynomial here is a constant, only one term and no variables. So it's just a number. And with no variables, it also has a degree of zero. Its graph looks like this, positive in blue and negative in red. It's just reflected vertically with the negative. Next, we move up to a degree of one. And we call this the linear relationship. And it looks like this. Again, a positive slope in blue and a negative in red. Again, the red is just reflected vertically. Moving to a degree of two, we have our quadratic relationship. And it looks like a big U. Positive in blue and negative, the reflection, in red. Quadratic graphs are sometimes called parabolas. And you see a parabola every time you toss a ball into the air, noting the ball's path while it's in the air. A cubic is a polynomial with a degree of 3, and is generally shaped like this. The positive is in blue, and the negative, or the reflection, in red. A quartic has a degree of 4. And it's generally shaped like this, a positive in blue and the negative or the vertical reflection in red. The positive is just a big W and the negative would be a big M. A quintic has a degree of 5 and it's generally shaped like this, positive in blue and negative or the vertical reflection in red. So let's stop there and observe some of the trends in these graphs. First, let's start by recognizing where these graphs begin and end. For a degree of zero, the constant, the positive starts in the top left and ends in the top right. The negative starts in the bottom left and ends in the bottom right. For a degree of one, the positive starts in the bottom left and ends in the top right. The negative is opposite in that it starts in the top left and ends in the bottom right. For degree two, the quadratic, the positive starts in the top left and ends in the top right. And the negative quadratic starts in the bottom left and ends in the bottom right. For degree three, the cubic, the positive starts in the bottom left and ends in the top right. The negative is opposite, it starts in the top left and ends in the bottom right. For a degree of four, the positive starts in the top left and ends in the top right, and the negative starts in the bottom left and ends in the bottom right. For a degree five, the positive starts in the bottom left and ends in the top right, and the negative, again opposite, it starts in the top left and ends in the bottom right. Now, let's reflect on this and we can recognize some definite trends here. Trend number one. The relationships with odd degrees, that is one, three, five, they all start in the bottom left and end in the top right. With the negatives of those odd degrees all starting in the top left and ending in the bottom right. Now, the relationships with even degrees, that is 0, 2, 4, 6, they all start in the top left and end in the top right, with their negatives all starting in the bottom left and ending in the bottom right. Now, this is a great trend to recognize, and it expands beyond these example polynomials. For instance, if you were asked, what do you know about this equation here? You might look a bit scared and you might say, well, I'm not sure what I can say about that one. But you already know one thing. It's positive and it's an odd degree. 
that is, the degree is 99. Therefore, we know that this graph starts in the bottom left and ends in the top right. What exactly happens in the middle might be still unknown, but it's a start on visualizing this relationship. Trend number two. Now, this trend is related to trend number one, and it helps us know what the minimum number of x-intercepts are in these polynomial relationships. And we'll recall that an x-intercept is also called a solution when dealing with equations. Now, if positive relationships with odd degrees all start in the bottom left and end up in the top right, then we know that getting from the bottom to the top means they must cross the x-axis at least once. And in the same way, if a negative odd degree relationship must get from the top to the bottom, then they again must cross the x-axis at least once. So, the minimum number of x-intercepts for an odd degree polynomial, whether positive or negative, is 1. They must cross the x-axis at least once. Switching to even degree relationships, we see that a positive even degree one can stay totally in the top half of our graph. It can start in the top left and end up in the top right. So even degree relationships can definitely avoid crossing the x-axis altogether. In the same way, negative even degree relationships could stay in the bottom half of our graph and again, never cross the x-axis. So the minimum number of x-intercepts for an even degree polynomial whether positive or negative, is zero. They can avoid crossing the x-axis altogether. So, trend two is we can determine the minimum number of x-intercepts within a polynomial relationship based on whether the degree is odd or even. The minimum for an odd degree is one, and the minimum for an even degree is zero, that is, no x-intercepts. Trend number three. In this one, we can determine the maximum number of x-intercepts of a polynomial relationship based on its degree. So trend two was based on whether the degree was odd or even. Trend three will be based on the actual value of the degree. For example, a non-zero constant, or degree equals zero, has no x-intercept. So we can say that it has a maximum and a minimum of zero x-intercepts. A degree of one, or linear relationship, simply gets from the bottom to the top or vice versa, and thus it would have both a minimum and a maximum number of x-intercepts being one. A degree of one will always have one x-intercept. A degree of two, or a quadratic relationship has one bump or change in direction. Therefore, it could cross the x-axis up to two times. Thus, degree two has a maximum of two x-intercepts. Degree three, or cubic, it would have two bumps or changes in direction, and therefore, it could cross the x-axis up to three times. Thus. A degree of 3 means a maximum of 3 x-intercepts. Degree 4, or quartic, has a maximum of, guess it, 4 x-intercepts. A degree 5, or quintic, has a maximum of, what do you figure, 5 x-intercepts. So you probably see the trend. The maximum number of x-intercepts in a polynomial relationship is related to the degree of that relationship. And in fact, not only related, they're equal. The maximum number of x-intercepts is the degree of the relationship. So we've discovered and documented three trends related to the degree of a polynomial relationship. Once you've seen these and worked with them a bit, they're pretty easy to remember. But if you're ever wanting to double check yourself in a test or something, it's easy to think back to some of the more basic versions.
I often think back to a degree of 1 as being linear, and it's easy to remember that degree 1 goes from lower left to top right for positive, and it crosses the x-axis once, and only once. So that's kind of my basis for the odd degree relationships. The even degree relationships, well, an easy one to remember is a quadratic. It always starts in the top left and turns around and heads up back to the top right. So clearly it can avoid the x-axis altogether, or touch it once, or cross it twice. And that's my reference for the even degree relationships. Remembering some basic examples will help you remember the trends that we've covered here.